It's that time of year again. And in honor of the second annual Women's March, I thought it would be a great idea to talk about equality. While women have earned the right to vote and are largely seen as equal to men under the law, there's still some pretty big discrepancies between the sexes and how they're treated in America. There's also some pretty big points missing from all these discussions about privilege and who seems to have all of it. I'm looking at you, cis white males. It's time to check some privilege. For example, in federal court, women are less likely to do time for the same crime. On average, men receive sentences that are 63% higher than women with the same convictions. Women are also more likely to avoid conviction altogether or to avoid incarceration when they are convicted. Privilege. Media and activists are more likely to focus on my gender's body image, self-esteem, and beauty standards and often ignore male self-esteem issues completely. On its most basic level, body positivity is the idea that all bodies are good bodies. <laughs> Historically, 70 to 80% of families looking to adopt specifically request baby girls, even though there are more boys available for adoption. As a woman, I can make statements about scientifically documented differences between men and women, like women having higher emotional intelligence and verbal skills, but men being better at spatial reasoning and technical skills, and probably not get fired from Google for being sexist. <laughs> I will, however, probably get called sexist or told I'm playing to the patriarchy or pandering to my audience for making this video simply because it focuses on inequalities experienced by men. Or worse, I'll get labeled an MRA. As a woman, I'm not automatically assumed to be a rapist and I'll probably never get accused of sexual assault. But if I ever did actually try to rape or assault a man, no one would believe him because according to progressive outlets, it's only men who rape. And they're too dumb or sex crazed to understand consent anyway. I can also take off more time from work for caring for family members and sick children, work shorter hours, and pick humanities jobs with lower pay. And then blame the patriarchy for the size of my paycheck. Two words. Toxic masculinity. And how it's blamed for everything. We have a serious sexual assault problem in the United States. One of the reasons why, toxic masculinity. The toxic masculinity may be to blame for men being way less environmentally friendly than women. The biggest thing to blame for the spate of mass shootings we've seen recently is something called toxic masculinity. The New York Times, which recently published a piece arguing that if left to their own devices, men would kill their dads and sleep with their moms. This quote, toxic masculinity is killing everyone. Repeat, toxic masculinity is killing everyone. Repeat, toxic masculinity is killing everyone. Repeat, we could go on. In school, I was praised for my girlish behavior, while boys were usually punished for their boyish behavior. Rowdy boys are often automatically assumed to have ADHD and are sent to their doctors for testing and medication. More boys are diagnosed with ADHD, but science still isn't sure if it's because more boys do actually have ADHD or because of the growing trend of pathologizing male behavior. Female genital mutilation is illegal in the US. As a baby, I didn't have part of my genitals removed because someone else thought it would look better or because they thought I would be too lazy or incompetent to properly clean myself as an adult. As a woman, I'm less likely to have a dangerous or risky job and therefore less likely to die from a work-related injury. Domestic violence against men is rarely recognized by society even though in 2013 the CDC found that roughly 30% of men experience domestic violence in their lifetime. And when these incidents are reported, female offenders are less likely to get arrested and male victims are more likely to be victim blamed than women. Many shelters serve women only and even family shelters don't allow male children after a certain age. Speaking of shelters, 62% of the homeless population is male and they're less likely than women to receive any aid or assistance. And I'm not the one being blamed for every act of oppression throughout history. Sorry white guys, it's your fault. Though progressive outlets claim that there isn't a gender bias in custody battles, women are awarded custody about 80% of the time. Only one in six custodial parents are fathers. As a woman, I also have the advantage of not having to sign up for the draft. 
I'll also be able to take my children to the park without other parents being suspicious of me. Now that we've reached the PC era, as a woman, I also have a chance of getting a job based on affirmative action or gender diversity quotas, rather than actual skill or suitability. Especially if I'm applying to the aforementioned Google. As a woman, I can choose to be a stay-at-home parent and the only people that will look down on me for it are radical feminists. And finally, many feminists and activist groups claim that the gender inequalities experienced by men aren't examples of sexism, but are merely non-privileges that don't have any actual effect on male lives. That's it for today, so as always, if you liked this video, please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, or find me on any of my social media. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.